Herpetic keratitis with corneal scarring. Here we have a slit lamp video of a 40 year old male patient who's had recurrent previous episodes of stromal herpetic keratitis. And you can actually see that there are some centra involving lesions there. And you can actually see some iron deposition within that central lesion. And that tells you the chronicity. You can also see some iron deposition in the more peripheral superior scarring and also some area of corneal neovascularization superiorly. And we're going to talk today about how we can tell that corneal neovascularization and vascularization of the corneum is active, what the consequences for this might be, and what the treatment for this is. So if you have vascularization, inflammation, as we can see here, we know it's active because actually we can see those individual red blood cells moving through the blood vessels. They're feeding the scar, they're feeding that lipid keratopathy, and they're depositing protein, lipid, and exudate within the cornea. And as this happens more progressively, that leads to reduction in vision. And so really, you want to reduce the inflammation, reduce the vascular endothelial growth, drive onto the corneal surface and you want to cause regression of those vessels. So one way of doing that is topical steroids by reducing ocular surface inflammation, ensuring that the patient has prophylaxis against any further episodes of hepatic keratitis. But another way of doing that is by considering corneal cautery, okay, to reduce the ability of the blood vessels to deliver that exudate but also, you can also consider injecting mitomycin into the blood vessels too, so you can appreciate that central corneal scarring. Hope you found that video useful and interesting today.